Hello everyone, welcome to Computer Aid. Today we learn about how to convert an analog signal into digital signal and why we do so. So let's begin. Suppose you attain a phone call. That means your voice sent over a long distance. You know that your voice is an analog signal contained in finite number of values. So we can't send it until it converted into digital signal. And we use this technique called pulse code modulation to do so. Now pulse code modulation or PCM made up of four separated processes. First is pulse amplitude modulation. You can also call it as PAM. Next process is quantization. Third is binary encoding. And the last step that is digital to digital encoding. Now we move on the first step that is pulse amplitude modulation. So we have an analog signal like this and this technique is very simple. Measure the amplitude of the signal in a particular time interval. Suppose the time interval is t. So after small t time we measure what is the amplitude is that means after this we also measure after t time we also measure the amplitude in this way so it's look like in this way these are the amplitude and after certain time we measure the amplitudes And this way. Now, here, this technique is called sampling. Means we get our samples or we take our samples after certain time interval. Now, how we measure that how many samples are required to represent this signal? There is a technique called Nyquist theorem. So, that is. Nyquist theorem. In this theorem, we ma this theorem say that we sample rate. That means how many samples are required to represent the signal is at least two times of the higher highest frequency of the original signal. Now, what is the frequency? Frequency means in one second. In one second, how many times it uh, it uh, the pattern repeats or the cycle full cycle repeats so sampling rate depend on it must be at least two times of the frequency of the highest frequency why we do so and if we uh, not maintain this formula what happened if we don't uh, maintain this formula we lost some information from the original signal so this is the Nyquist theorem that saying sampling this must be at least two times of the highest frequency okay so this is the first uh, first step so in the step Although we translate the original signal into the series of pulses, but it is still an analog signal. 
So to create this analog signal completely into digital signal, we follow the next step that is quantization. So after the first step, we get the series of pulse that is called sum pulse. Now in quantization, in this method, after sampling, we get the series of pulse. In this step, we assign the values to the samples. So it is like, and the value should be integer. So suppose this is 24.2. So we write 24 for this. Okay. In this way, we write all, suppose this is 38. And obviously we have to maintain the sign of it. So it is positive phase. So plus 38 plus 48 plus 39 plus 26 suppose this is in negative so minus 25 minus 80 minus 50 in this way we can assign all the values of the values of the amplitudes okay now the next step is binary encoding In this step, we can represent this amplitude values into the binary equivalents. Okay, so if we write plus 24 in the binary form, we represent this into 8 bit binary form. Okay, so to represent plus we write 0 and to represent minus we write 1 okay so this is 1 bit and for 8 bit last 7 bit is to represent the value that is 24 so it is a positive value so we write 0 and for 24 that is 11000 that is 24 but here it is 5 bit so we have to represent the value in 7 bits. So previously we had two zeros. So now it is 4 and 4 that is 8 bits. Now suppose we represent minus 20, minus 15. So to represent a negative value we start with 1 and followed by 7 digits to represent 15. So 15 means 1, 1, 1, 1. This is 4 bit, so we add 3 bit zeros to get total 8 bit. Okay, so if we represent all the values, it looks like this. For plus positive values, we represent starting with zeros, and for negative values, we start with ones. Okay. So this is the final, so this is the binary encoding and then the next step is digital to digital encoding. In this step or the final step, digital to digital encoding means digit, convert the digital values or digital data into digital signal. Okay. Now here, this binary digits are transformed into digital signal. So how it is? work so zero zero one 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 zero 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 and then it represents zero 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 one one then zero 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 if we so it is plus twenty four then the next value is plus thirty eight so plus thirty eight is zero zero one zero zero one one zero this so we represent it as a signal. The next suppose is 24, so sorry, 48 plus 48. It represent 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. So the signal is look like this. So this is the last step that we convert the values digital data into digital signals and this is the direction this is the direction 
of transfer okay now we show 